One thing commonly overlooked is what fat we cook our foods in. Just about every person, multiple times per day, needs some type of oil or fat to prepare their meals. The average American throws conventional feedlot butter in a pan to fry their eggs, brainwashed bodybuilders, juice and monkeys, and vegans use nonstick cooking sprays filled with chemicals and poison. A Mexican grandma might use lard from soy-fed pork that's high in omega-6. Quite a few things can go wrong. There are three basics we're looking at today. One is the fatty acid profile. We want as little polyunsaturated fat, as little of that omega-6 as possible, favoring saturated and monounsaturated as these are less prone to oxidation and line up with the natural fat ratios in our bodies. Two is the method the animal was raised that affects the fatty acid profile as well as the chemicals in the food. Three, if it's not an animal fat or the animal fat was processed, what is the method used? You know, what temperature was it heated at? Were any chemicals used in the process along the way? How does that affect the chemical composition, the oxidation of the cooking fat. Before we jump into this list, a few things are assumed. If a tallow or rendered fat is used, that it was heated at a low temperature. And tallow rendered fat is just taking that raw fat off the animal carcass, putting it in a pot, rendering it down into an oil, and then that is typically jarred. The store-bought options aren't really reliable, you know, for two reasons. One, the feed for the animals is usually low quality. There's omega-6 concerns, soy, corn, antibiotics, chemicals, all that type of stuff. And two, usually is some oxidation because they heat it at a high temperature. But you should be able to smell that oxidation and it wouldn't sit well in your stomach if the former was true. You know, those chemicals, omega-6 concerns were there. The solution is to basically make it yourself every month or so with high quality fat and make sure it's at a low temperature or buy it from a source that doesn't overheat their fat, such as Frankie's free range meat, that's something we try to do. And we also need to assume the product is high quality. You know, the animal was being fed grass, not sprayed with too many chemicals, not given antibiotics. The marketing can be misleading. You know, make sure to purchase products from a trusted local farmer, maybe even seeking an organic label, especially in the supermarket, but that doesn't seem to mean too much anymore. Here we have our top 10 cooking fats, as well as a bunch of relevant terms we'll discuss. So number 10 is pasture-raised pork lard. Now, this would be higher on the list, but the reason it's low is that, generally speaking, even pasture-raised pork still gets corn, soy, so the polyunsaturated fat content becomes higher. You know, example of this clever marketing is Butcher Box saying they sell heritage breed pork. You know, that's a red flag that it's omega-6 conventional crap with clever marketing. But if you have, you know, decent quality pasture-raised pork that is mostly on forage, it is a great option. The iberical lard we have on Frankie's free range meat is something I'm comfortable cooking with, but I would never buy pork lard from anything besides a local farm that disclosed what they're feeding the animals any supermarket, Whole Foods, Amazon, online retailer, you wanna make sure they're honest and transparent about what the animals were eating. And I'm really confident in saying the pork lard and pork fat we sell is the best in the United States. Same applies to number nine, which is raw pork fat. And this could be up higher with the other animal fats, but again, most of the time, you're not getting a quality product when you buy pork fat. And a lot of this also applies to chicken, duck, poultry, which don't actually make the top 10 list, partially due to availability. And the reason the fat ranks above the lard is because you can throw the fat in the pan, render it on the spot, and then cook with it, which is a little more inconvenient, but definitely better quality. Number eight is ghee, AKA clarified butter. Granted, the original butter was high quality, Ghee is when you take butter and basically caramelize it in a big pot. It's heated, the milk proteins separate, it develops a nutty flavor, and the temperature can be pretty high, so there might be some oxidation concern, but since butter is so high in saturated fat, generally not. It's definitely one of the best fats you can cook with. 
the fatty acid profile is great. You know, butyrate is so beneficial to gut health. It's just that less heated butter products went out. That being said, this is incredibly shelf stable. We've actually made this raw on our channel before. You can take raw butter and clarify it. Raw clarified butter is probably up there with some other things we'll speak about. For number seven, we have coconut oil. And I was debating on whether this should be higher or lower on the list. It could honestly be ranked very, very high. It's super high in saturated fat, so the oxidation concern is really not there at all. And whether you use virgin or refined, you know, combined with the availability of organic, it seems like a great choice overall for any cooking needs. There's very little to worry about when it comes to cooking with coconut oil. For number six, we have grass-fed butter, and that means any pasteurized butter, what you buy from the supermarket, the Finlandia we have on Frankie's free range meat, it's generally high quality, but was heated, which compromises the bacteria profile, the digestibility of the dairy, and also slightly reduces the nutrients. That being said, you know, the amount of heating required for butter is much lower than rendering any tallow or fat. Uh, you know, we mentioned butter fat is super, super nutritious. Not only do you have the butyrate, you know, you have calcium, a bunch of fat soluble vitamins and things that are not as high in the animal fats like tallow. But in some cases, the nutrition from dairy can be overkill if you eat too much of it. Now at number five, we have our top ranking fats. Basically from number five up it is the best stuff you can be cooking with. We have grass fed lamb tallow, which is equal to number four, grass-fed beef tallow. And the reason for lamb and beef is they tend to have the best fatty acid profiles as those animals are usually fed solely grass. And although the fat needs to be heated for a pretty long time to make tallow, it can be done at a temperature that minimizes oxidation and preserves most of the nutrients. You know, the reason those fats rank above butter is because people tend to have allergies and some are unable to tolerate that dairy. Whereas for the most part, both lamb and beef tallow is safe for most people. Number three is raw grass fed butter. And cooking with raw butter is very, very expensive considering most of the time you have to pay 13, 14, $15 a pound. And people would usually prefer to keep something that expensive in its raw state. But since you know it was never heated before putting it in the pan, there's basically zero oxidation concern. All of the nutrition is intact. It's simply slightly higher in nutrition and not oxidized compared to the previous fats we spoke about. And you know we mentioned that you can do raw clarified butter, which would be equivalent to raw grass-fed butter. The raw versus cooked argument has more to do with digestion, and you definitely want both raw and cooked foods in your diet. It's just a lot of people, especially the stands in American diets tend to be heavily favoring cooked foods. So when people do eat raw, they start feeling better and having dairy as a raw component of your diet is very approachable. Uh, number two, we have raw grass fed lamb fat, which as with lamb and beef tallow is equivalent to raw grass fed beef fat. These are your top two guys. You're basically putting chunks of fat in a pan and rendering the tallow on the spot. Sometimes if you have like a fatty New York strip steak, you can render that fat cap on the steak and then cook it in those drippings. Same with a really fatty ribeye, you can cut a few chunks of fat off or you know, you could buy the fat from Frankie's free range meat. That's why we've gone out far and wide to get the highest quality, like deep yellow, almost butterscotch tasting fat because it's an amazing food that people don't really know about. There's absolutely no oxidation concern, and it's hard to argue against these being the healthiest, most natural cooking fats. Least inflammatory, high in vitamins, balanced, very possible in nature. Uh, one thing I didn't mention was bone marrow, marrow fat, and it's very, very expensive. If you can get high quality grass-fed raw bone marrow, and then you put it in a pan to cook with it, uh, by all means, that would also be very healthy, but you know, marrow bones, you know, cost six, seven, eight, nine dollars a pound, and the yield for the fat is about 10%. So probably 10 to 20 times the price of beef fat or lamb fat. And there's certainly more considerations. You know, what if it's not completely grass-fed? Was it overheated and over-rendered? 
Are there chemicals in it from the crops being sprayed? You can find out the feed, what the animal was eating for sure. Uh, so once you know that, you can control what temperature the product was rendered at by making it yourself or simply you know, smelling the oxidation, having a conversation with that producer, you know, what temperature and what length did they cook their fat product at? And the most important two things, guys, are are there any negative things in the food and how oxidized was it? We're more concerned about the negatives as opposed to, oh, is it 100% grass-fed or you know, is it from the highest quality, best fatty acid ratio animal? It's more important that you're not poisoning yourself. Uh, duck fat, chicken schmaltz aren't on this list. Those animals are almost always fed large amounts of corn and soy and you know the raw fat tends to not be available. You have to harvest a lot of ducks and chickens and usually they keep that on the animal to sell it as a whole. I would even rank olive oil, avocado oil, even something like safflower oil above most duck fat, chicken fat, even pork fat. Uh, you know Those three, um, the olive oil, the safflower oil, as well as the avocado oil, almost made it on this list. You know, they're relatively low in omega-6, not the worst things in the world, probably some slight oxidation concerns. You know, some high oleic oils, uh, which is a monounsaturated fat, even peanut oil might not be that horrible to use, you know, if it's all you have access to, but definitely not a long-term consistent thing. I mean, a good example of this might be someone that eats, you know, conventional feedlot bacon and eggs on a carnivore diet, but avoids seed oils like the plague. If the animal product is low quality, you're still getting that same high omega-6 linoleic acid content, which is contained in vegetable seed oils. Uh, so we definitely can't overlook that. But thank you guys for joining me. Hopefully this helps you figure out what fat you should be cooking with. And, and this is probably uh, going to answer the question of why you guys see me uh, cook with a lot of coconut oil lately. It's, it's pretty high up on the list. It's reasonably convenient. You know, it doesn't have to be stored in the fridge. You don't have to render it every time you use it. Uh, but definitely try out uh, some of the fats we have on Frankie's Free Range Meat and let me know how you like them. Uh, we will have them available uh, as of right now on Frankie's Free Range Foods as well. Uh, so if you're international, you can try them out, uh, but we'll probably uh, get into trouble because it'll get seized at customs because most countries you can't sell animal products to other countries. Uh, that being said, if you guys could please drop a like on the video, leave a comment down below, you know, share this on any dietary groups you're involved with. Uh, but thanks again for joining me, guys, and I'll see you for tomorrow's video. If you guys don't see me, happy Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving.